Hey everyone, it's Alex. Welcome back to my channel and my podcasts and all that fun stuff. Cubs, 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 World Series, still high about it, still celebrating it, still... And when I say high about it, I mean I'm addicted to this stuff. I mean, the more stuff, the better. The more merchandise, the more re-watching of the highlights from the playoff run, the more watching kind of like the documentaries that are coming out about it now. There's going to be one coming out really soon. I just saw an ad for it on MLB Network. Uh, fun, fun, fun. Going to be great. But that's not what I'm going to focus on right now. Right now, I want to talk about something very, very sad. Something so sad that we're so used to its sadness that it doesn't really even affect us much anymore. And that's the Chicago Bears. The monsters of the midway are all but. They're 2-9, and nine, another bad losing season. Uh, a team that you thought was taking a positive direction at the beginning of the season, only to really find it's just gone down more. A team that now has 15 players on IR. 15. Including, let's see, your starting quarterback, uh, your Pro Bowl lineman, your tight end that's probably the most reliable target this year, uh, one of your young draft picks who is also a wide receiver who missed all of last year because that, that's a whole other story, but you know Kevin White. Uh, you know, we also lost another rookie who was looking really good, Leonard Floyd. And we lost linebacker Danny Trevathan. That's just to name a few. And then you have other two-star players like Jarrell Freeman at linebacker, Alshon Jeffrey wide receiver, who have been suspended for PEDs. So a very depleted team that has no depth whatsoever shows its lack of depth as they lose a game again to the Titans when you have receiving cores that can't catch easy passes. And now I know I'm no football player, and I can't say I'd go out there and make that catch. But you think those kind of throws that they were, considering how little they were covered in the end zone. Yes, I'm talking about Bellamy in the end zone with under a minute to go. Being so wide open and the throw being perfect, not being able to catch it. With coaching that is no longer trusted by the fans. And frankly, I don't think some of the players trust them either with misinformation and things that are just just very weird you'd really have to look at it to see it it's hard to explain but if you're a Bears fan you know what I'm talking about with owners that probably have not been praised by the fans in a long time and continue to be looked at in a negative light and that you could argue would be better off selling the team for the better sake of the team and you now have a very empty soldier field with no life whatsoever. You have the Chicago Bears, one of the biggest markets in sports, being so god-awful that the fans just don't care anymore. They don't invest much emotion in it because they know the outcome. They know how bad they've been for a while. And they, frankly, just don't want to spend their time looking at it. I mean, it's pretty sad. You know, when I was a kid, the Bears had some bad seasons, but even in those bad seasons, the fans still went. Sundays were all about the Bears, and now more and more you're hearing fans talking about, you know what, I got better stuff to do than to watch them. I don't want to watch them. I could do this on Sunday. I could do that on Sunday. I could spend my life not worrying about them. And that's the attitude that grows week by week, year after year, the past few years. So, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about, was looking at Soldier Field yesterday. Now, the Tribune reported that somebody said that there were 11,000 no-shows. Both the Tribune, myself, and other sports outlets said there were not 11,000 no-shows. There was probably double the amount of no-shows. That place was nearly half empty. I'd say it was about 65% full based on all the images I've seen on TV, all the pictures that people have posted. I've looked at how many pictures there were uh, throughout the game on social media. There were different postings and there were also different shots from the game too showing the crowd. I mean, it was not like a few thousand missing. There were a lot of empty seats. If you looked at the upper deck... Uh, in the corners, there was absolutely no one. There was no life. 
there were people who were just kind of there to just kind of be there. It it was a really a sad sight. And the sad thing is, is that those no-shows bought tickets. They couldn't sell tickets for the life of them. They couldn't sell them. No one wanted to buy them. But those all were sold. And no matter what, the McCaskies still got all that money. Despite people not showing up, it really doesn't make a difference with that because the tickets were already bought. Now, maybe if this started during the season and those tickets were not bought, those seats were empty because no one bought the tickets, not because they didn't show up, maybe that'd be a little different. But even so, you would think, you would think that as an owner, it would be disheartening to sit in your luxury box in your big fur coat as you are the queen of the franchise and look around and see all those empty seats. But in reality, they're not going to make some huge changes after they see all those empty seats. They're not going to go in and fire everyone. They're not going to go in and change the whole philosophy of the organization, you know, with the snap of a finger. It's just not going to happen that way. I'm sorry to say, it's it's just not. Now, at the end of the season, there will be some changes most likely, but it's not like they're going to say, oh, we're going to sell the team or we're going to gut the franchise and completely start over again. It's just it's just not going to happen. It really is something to think about when 10 years ago this team was in the Super Bowl and Soldier Field was full and rocking all the time, but that's the complete opposite now. They haven't made the playoffs since 2010. They've only been to one Super Bowl since they won it in 1985. And they've had so many more just painful losses then they've had great wins the past decade. It it really is. Going back to that Super Bowl, way more painful losses than great wins. And the fans, they're getting so used to it. It's like, what? why bother being mad at this point? The apathy just grows and grows. And that's how I feel. It's not worth getting mad about this team at this point. The organization is a mess. The team is a mess. We know that. I mean, you think it can't get worse, and it always finds a way of getting worse the next week. So, it's like it's not worth it at this point, because nothing's going to magically get better. And you know what? People ask the question, when do you think this Bears team will finally get better? You know what the true answer is? That is an impossible question to answer. I have no idea. But you know what I'm going to tell you? It's not going to be anytime soon. It is not. I guarantee it. Now, I know in the NFL, you could go from worst to first pretty easily. You see it a lot. But I don't see it with this team right now. Now, with Ryan Pace, I'm going to give him a few more drafts because he has drafted some good players. If they could stay healthy, though, is the big question. But I think there's going to be some overhaul in head coach. I think John Fox is gone. I think they're going to try to keep Vic Fangio. I think Dowell, he's gone. Look look at the offensive plan. Let's run the ball like crazy and have it be successful in the first half. And then our running backs barely touch the ball in the second half. Now, you talk about the lack of adjustment in the second half of the Bears. The one thing they do is run the ball less, even though they do a good job at it in several games. That's the one thing they adjust to. The one thing they shouldn't adjust to. It's like they do everything backwards at times. It's just mind-boggling. So, you know, there's a lot more you could talk about with this Bears team, but I kind of hit a lot of the high points. And there's so much more you could analyze, and I think Bears fans already have, and we're just kind of sick of it. We're sitting here having the Hawks and the Bulls hold us up until spring training gets here again, and, you know, a lot of us are hoping that the Cubs repeat as World Series champions, and, you know, we'll see what they do you know, in the offseason with Dexter Fowler and maybe some trades here or there. But right now, football in Chicago, it's like it might be as least cared about as it ever has been. Sundays are no longer like, ooh, Bears Day here in the Chicago household. You know, it's all dedicated to the Bears. Everyone's going to cancel any plans they have. They're going to leave church early to get to kickoff. You don't see that anymore. Now it's saying it's Bears Sunday. What can I do to not watch them? That's pretty sad. And I want it to change, but I just don't see it changing anytime soon.
This has been Alex Pat. Thanks for listening. And uh, it's almost over. Uh, maybe, what is that, five more games? But just, you know, like I said, don't invest too much emotion in it. It's not worth it. Thanks for listening.